I'm the guy you see on the highway tugging a tiny A-liner. It's usually the smallest trailer in the campsite, but the one that gets the most attention. In today's episode, I'm going to show you a few modifications, upgrades, and ways to enjoy traveling on an A-liner. Welcome to Have Map, Will Travel. Yes, I admit that I can go camping with a lot less stuff, but you never know what you need, so I pack it with me. So how do I get all this stuff in my tiny 10-foot A-liner and still have room for two adults to sleep and move about? I'm here to show you. But first, let me give you a small tour of the A-liner. As you enter towards the right is a small bunk. It's 30 inches wide and a little over 6 feet long. It's long enough. I can sleep there. There's a cooktop stove with two burners, a little sink. This is the dining area, which converts into a bed 40 inches wide. And there's air conditioning, which works on shore power. And we're back. That's it. No more. Let's start with the front of the A-liner, which has a bed that is 30 inches wide, and it sits on two sections of plywood. Below the left section is where the water heater lives and there is a separate piece of plywood to access that area. I don't store anything in there because of the water pipes and electrical wires. The longer piece of plywood is above two separate storage areas. Towards the right side, I have a porta potty which can be accessed by a small door. More on this modification later. However, the midsection has a tiny door that swings upward, but the cavity is quite large. Access from the top allows me to put bigger storage bins. This is where I store my kitchen gear and miscellaneous electrical and water hookups. I also store a small propane heater, a portable power station, and collapsible water basins to keep things snug. In order to create easier access to this area, I cut the long piece of plywood into two sections. I also drilled a finger hole to open the lid, which also acts as a place to rest a small stick to keep the lid from coming down. There is a little bit more storage in the back of the trailer, which is part of the dining area and converts to a bed that is 40 inches in width. After I removed the cushions, I discovered a narrow storage area in the back, which is the width of the A-liner. However, it was covered by a long piece of plywood, which made it difficult to access. To remedy this, I cut the plywood into three sections, allowing me access through the middle without having to remove the cushions. There isn't much space back there, however it's just enough to place the shower curtain rods and a metal wire shelf, which you'll soon learn why I need them, as well as the swimming pool noodles that are used to fill in the gaps in the ceiling on cold nights. I packed the remaining camping gear in the dining area. Notice that all the gear sits below the slats, which are used to make up the bed. And yes, this configuration eliminates the dining area, but we usually use the counters to rest our food and drinks on the occasions when we eat indoors. In case we do set up the area for dining, we use a smaller table and leave the bigger one that came with the A-liner at home. It's extremely important that you pack your gear in a way that is distributed evenly and does not move around during transport. I wedge a piece of used floorboard against the two counters to keep my gear from moving. My trailer has handled well and everything inside does not exceed the gross trailer capacity weight. On the driver's side back portion of the A-liner is where an 11 gallon water tank makes its home. Along with the wiring for the propane slash carbon monoxide alarm and power converter, there is no other space, so I don't store anything in there. There is storage on the opposite side. However, I gain access to that space from the outside, and this is where I store the wheel chocks, wood blocks, levelers, and other miscellaneous items related to securing the trailer. There are two storage areas underneath the air conditioner cabinet. I store eating utensils and plastic dishes on the top shelf. I removed the three plastic sliding trays that were inside the bottom shelf and I now store a hot water kettle, toaster, thermos bottle, and a dust buster vacuum cleaner. There is a small narrow space underneath the sink and this is where I store cleaning products, paper towels, and sponges. Next to it is where the electric cooler is housed. There is a little bit of space on the top of the cooler and we usually store light food items in a bag. The cooler sits on a board that slides out on metal rails. It runs on 12 volt power and there is a connection inside the cabinet. 
The cooler has a removable divider allowing for frozen foods on the left side. I store a dry food bin and an ice cooler in the back of my tow vehicle. The ice chest is a backup to the electric cooler in the A-liner since it's small and doesn't hold elongated items like orange juice and margarita mix bottles. As you've noticed, I'm a big proponent of using plastic containers to store my gear. I have one container each for my camping gear, my kitchen gear, and one for water and electrical hookups. I also use small containers to store dishes and eating utensils. It's a good way to organize and to find items fast. My camping chairs, luggage, firewood, and anything else are also packed in the tow vehicle. One thing that I want to point out is that I consider the A-Liner a tiny house. So in order to create more space in the trailer, I unpack all of my gear once I reach my campsite. The kitchen and camping gear stay outside, which is why I pack them in water-resistant bins. Food and the extra ice cooler are kept in my tow vehicle or a specified bear bin if I'm camping in bear country. This allows more room in the trailer for duffel bags, water, and a small amount of food. It doesn't take very long to unpack, and it's easy to pack the A-liner on departure day. Here's a neat idea thanks to fellow YouTuber Stimulus the A-liner. I borrowed his idea of using two expanding shower rods against the sidewalls of the A-liner and shower curtain hooks to hold up a wire shelf. I level it off and it's ready to use. It doesn't hold a great amount of weight, but it can hold lightweight items such as plastic dishes, utensils, and a roll of paper towels. The hooks can be used to hang a pan, cooking utensils, and other light items. Lastly, you can use the shower rods to hang wet towels or clothes, or hang a flour tortilla blanket as a makeshift privacy curtain. My A-liner does not have a built-in toilet, so I purchased a Seaflow porta potty from Amazon. It's a 12 liter toilet and it's small enough to fit underneath the front bed. During travel, the porta potty is secured by a small bungee cord. Because there is no obstruction on the floor of the opening, the toilet easily slides out when needed and it slides back in without any issues. It's only used during the night as we usually camp at locations with toilets. We haven't gone boondocking, so I'm not sure how many days of waste can be held in the lower waste container. Because my A-liner does not have a gray water storage tank, I created a small one out of a 5-gallon water container that I no longer used. I drilled a hole on the side and attached a PVC pipe onto it. One can attach a grommet for a better seal if needed. The other end of the PVC pipe is attached to the drain pipe with a rubber coupling that I purchased at the Home Depot. To empty the tank, simply unhook the rubber coupling and remove the pipe from the container. I then screw on a fitting into the hole to transport the used water to a toilet or dump station. I can use the same drilled hole or the main screw at the top of the container to empty it. Notice that the tank is small, making it easy to lift when it's full. There is a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter and two USB ports on the dining room side of the A-liner which work under battery power. If connected to shore power, there is a 120 volt outlet just under the rear bed and another one below the sink. There are no plugs in the front bunk area. A modification was in order to add accessible plugs. I installed a pop-up outlets power strip that secures on the countertop next to the air conditioner. The power strip has two USB ports and three electrical outlets. Make sure you lower the power strip before collapsing the A-liner to avoid damage. There is a 120 volt outlet inside the cabinet where the power strip is plugged in. I also installed a pop-up outlet behind their countertop stove, which is connected to the 120 volt power outlet located next to the electric cooler. Keep in mind that the power strip, including the USB ports, do not function unless plugged into shore power. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you found the video helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. More videos to follow as I venture through the highways and interstates in my tiny A-liner.